Welcome back, fuckers. Alrighty, today we're gonna run through uh, the crank. Okay, so we did a BVR tactics video uh, the other day on YouTube on how to do an engagement with the AIM-120 using TWS mode. And we've got the track file now using TACView uh, of that exact uh, video or that that uh, video that we made. That's what we're going to watch now in TAC view. So we've got myself here. Uh, we've got airspeed of myself and the red air aircraft we spawned in in the mission that I flew in the YouTube video. Uh, so we've got a couple of things here. So we've got airspeed of the SG-27 1.18 Mac, right? And we've got my airspeed 1.14 Mac. Our angels 32 or 302, so 30,200, 31,400 feet. And we've got a little arrow up and down, okay, which I think uh, relates to airspeed, but I'm not sure. All right, but anyways, so as we uh, we cruise through here, we've got some ranging. So we're at 32 nautical miles. So if you remember it on the video previous, all right, we had uh, let's go there. Uh, at about 30 mile, the SU-27 launched at us. So remember, the SU-27 doesn't have active missiles, so it has to hold lock on us the entire time for uh, the missile to track, okay? Whereas we've got the AIM-120. Uh, once the missile goes active, okay, we can effectively turn cold and the missile will continue to track the uh, aircraft without us providing a lock. So the AIM-120 is way more superior than a Fox one because we can fire and forget once it's gone active. So here we go. Press and play, we're at 31 miles. So at 30, I think is when the SU-20, there we go. 30, let's uh, pause that. Pause and let's cruise back a bit. All right, so at 30.21 nautical mile. Old mate fired. All right, now we've got the missile speed here. So if we pause it now, wait for it to get to its top speed. So about there, let's cruise back a touch. 4.33 Mac. Okay, so Mac 4.33 is the top speed of the missile. So you can see, as soon as we got the missile launch warning from the SU-27, I started to go into my crank. And if you remember in the video, I cranked to the left and put the, uh, I still had him locked up in TWS mode. I kept him right on the edge of my radar lock. Okay, so I cranked to the left and put my target lock or the, the, the target of the radar right on the right side. All right, so let's press play again. So now watch what happens to the missile speed. So I was doing Mach 3.8, slowing down, and we're still continuing putting the aircraft on the right hand limits of our radar so we've still got him locked up in track while scan all right so look at the airspeed 2.4 mac we're doing mac 1.1 so as we close in here at 20 mile i think i turn back in all right so mac 1.9 so if we pause there so from launch he has effectively you know it was like four mac four something like that what was it when it first launched yeah mac 4.3 by the time it's getting, you know, within striking distance of us, it's down to Mach 1.27. And remember, our aircraft is still doing Mach 1.15, so we've got a lot of speed on the jet here. Uh, and now, when we get to 20 mile, we started our turn back in. So remember, I cranked to the left, got to 20 mile, and I'm gonna turn back in as soon as I get, uh, you know, my nose pointed at the aircraft, I'm gonna fox my Fox 3 and I'm gonna to continue to crank back the other way now, okay? And what we've done is we've bled all that speed off. Look, 1.27, that missile's pretty much trash. Unless we just keep flying straight, dumb, fucking stupid and happy, that missile is not gonna hit us because we're gonna turn back in and watch what happens when we turn back in. Watch the airspeed of the missile. All right, it's doing 1.15. Now we are pretty much on the same Pace as that missile we've fired our aim 120 and now we're cranking to the right watch the missile now it's at 0.75 that missile is dead okay dead in the water and same deal here why you crank back the other way 
So I didn't know this dude shot the uh, R27 ET. So that's a long range uh, heat seeker missile. Okay, so the R27 ER is the extended range uh, Fox 1 for the SU-27. All right, so that missile is trash. That had no chance of hitting us, even without putting chaff out. Okay, it had no chance of hitting us. Um, even if we didn't fire a missile, okay, it wouldn't have hit us because it was just trashed because we put the uh, the crank in. <clears throat> so if we go back now and watch the uh, R27 ET come off the rail. So he's fired at 20 nautical mile. He's fired the R27 ET. So speed on this isn't as fast. Mac 3.67, 3.7 and it's slowing down. So rocket motor's finished there. So remember this one's effectively trashed, it's gone. We fired our aim 120. So watch now, we've cranked back to the right. And the reason you crank back the other way is if they have fired a secondary missile, you want to make the missile, okay, pull as much lead as possible. So remember it's three point something or other, it's already pretty much half of its speed, you know? So if you were to draw, let's go zoom out of touch. So if you draw a line, how missiles work, if you draw a line out the nose of my aircraft, okay, the missile is calculating an intercept point on that line. So the more angle you put from the missile, okay, to across your nose, the more it has to pull lead. So it's aiming somewhere up here. Because if I keep flying in that uh, that direction, the missile wants to intercept me. It's not going to fly at me. The missile doesn't fly at you. It pulls lead and tries to intercept your flight path. So this is why the notch works because it makes the missile bleed its airspeed off. Once the missile's rocket motor has stopped firing, okay, it's burnt out. The missile is losing energy and the more you can make the missile maneuver without its rocket motor burning the more chance you've got of scrubbing all the speed off and then once it, the airspeed of the uh, the missile gets below your airspeed so i'm still doing mach 1.07 right this is doing 0.5 mach so that us r27 er even though it's dead now because he's lost lock on us but it had no chance of hitting us because of the crank so now as we keep cranking the opposite direction, because I didn't even know he fired this, okay? I didn't get a launch warning because it's a uh, it's a heat seeker. So I got no missile launch warning. Did not even know that he fired. So if I would have kept on flying straight, all right? So if I would have uh, launched my AMRAM and just flew straight, straight ahead and just kept nose on him here, all right? That missile, R27 ET, would not have to pull massive lead and bleed all of its speed off and it would probably it probably would have killed me all right and i didn't even know it was launched didn't even know it was launched so watch the speed now as i go into the crank to the right i'm still keeping him locked up in tws mode so i'm waiting for my missile to go active i've cranked i've got him on the right on the uh the left limits of my radar the sweep and now i've started to turn away even further so my missile has gone active now i've got the countdown timer to zero it's gone active so now i have gone ahead and gone full defensive just in case so you can see me pulling my nose out and look at the speed of this et because it's trying to pull lead here i'm uh, diving down to the deck and look at that missile is trash 0.5 missiles dead in there and then our missile because we did the not uh, the crank we uh made his missile bleed all its energy and effectively become a non-factor for us. Even though we had the missile warning lock beeping in our ears the whole time, all right, we effectively trashed it. We got to within, when did we launch the AIM-120? All right, came off the rail at, we fired that at 18 mile, okay? 18 miles as opposed to when old mate fired it at 30 mile. Okay, he fired first at 30. We went into the crank, bled all the energy off the missile turned back in, fired ours at 18 miles, cranked the opposite way to bleed, like fully defeat that missile. And then our missile's gone active and it's still doing Mach 2.79, as opposed to when this missile got near us. All right, it was less than Mach 1, all right, no factor. And then you see his airspeed, 0.94 Mach, so he's bled his speed off, he didn't keep his speed up. And again, this is an AI aircraft, so keep that in mind. Our missile is still doing 2.6 Mac, all right, and he is at 0.94 Mac. So we've got a shit ton of energy on our missile. He's chaffing, he's flaring, trying to defeat it, and bam, he gets hit by the missile, still doing Mac 
2, essentially. Right? Mac 1.91. That missile smacked him in the head. And that's the beauty of the crank. All right. So we didn't know he'd been killed then. All right. Because uh, I just fired it. There's no way to know. And then I still had a contact on my uh, data link. So I turned back in to recommit. And then picked him up on radar as he was uh, falling into pieces into the ocean. And that's what happened. So that is the tack view of the uh, the engagement we did in the BVR tactics video. All right, he's ejected there. And both those misses, I didn't even know he fired the ET. I didn't even know he fired it. But because we did the crank in the opposite direction, we trashed that missile as well. Okay, without even knowing it. Cool. So that is how you do a uh, crank and why you crank to the left and right is to bleed speed off the missile okay so again let's uh, zoom out here get into where he fires so missile is fired there at 30 nautical mile we go into the crank to the left cranking left we're putting we're keeping TWS lock on this guy but we're pulling as far left as we can that we don't lose lock on our radar okay and he's maneuvering to keep his lock on us because we're turning left he's maneuvering to keep his lock um and you can see the missile now because our aircraft is pointing out this way the missile is going to start turning further to the to its right to try and get an intercept course because we're still doing, still doing mac 1.16 so you're going to see the missile now is going to try and plot an intercept course in front of our aircraft and it's bleeding speed off okay it's rocket mode is no longer a factor it's not burning anymore it's burnt out so this air missile is just losing speed constantly so the more you can make the missile maneuver better chance you got all right so now we've uh, started our crank back in the opposite direction making the missile again pull even more lead so now we're like it's like oh shit you're turning to the uh to my left so the missile's gonna have to hoik it hard Hard to its left to get a shot at me and look at the speed at 0.7 mac that missile is dead absolutely dead and then uh there we go we fired our amram and because he didn't notch our missile has got uh so much no not notch didn't crank our missile hits him still doing mac 2 point you know 1.9 something or other is when the missile actually impacts him and we've trashed both of his just by maneuvering our aircraft 1.9 bam hit him so that is the benefit of a crank make sure when you're cranking <clears throat> have a think about which direction you're going to go so okay just say uh we had this set up again all right so we've got our target we're uh, going to the you know bvr engagement with this uh this guy one on one All right, so here we are. If there was other, so say there was uh, the carrier group, red carrier group and air threats or SAM sites, whatever, to our left, you wouldn't crank that way. Or if there's a heap more red fighters that way, you wouldn't crank to the left. You want to crank towards friendlies or crank away from, in this case, there was nothing, no threat, so we could choose either left or right. But um, if uh, we were over in the mountain ranges, for example, I would want to crank kind of towards the mountains so that I could dive down into them and use the mountains as a you know line of sight to try and trash the missile as well so you got to be smart about which way you want to crank left or right uh due to you know threats in the area if there's a SAM site over here there's no point cranking left because then you're going to fly straight into a SAM and get missile shot at you from there and then this guy is going to have a field day because you're going to be instead of worrying about him you're going to have to start defending against the SAM site or if there's other aircraft flying at you from this direction you want to launch or you want to crank to the right and then turn in take your shot and then uh you know, as soon as it goes active get the fuck out because you've got other aircraft in the area so be smart about which direction you're going to crank just don't don't crank any old way have a bit of a have a bit of a think about which way you want to kind of turn back towards friendlies okay or friendly forces to give you extra cover Righto, boys. I hope you learned something about the crank. All right, uh, that wasn't really a Hornet video. That applies to all aircraft. Uh, airspeed and altitude is your friend. 
the faster and higher you're going, the more range you're going to get on your missile, which means the uh, longer you're going to be, or the further out you can shoot and put them on the defense. Uh, but just remember the crank. Okay, crank makes their missile bleed energy to pull lead for your uh, your corrected flight path. And when you're doing this in PvP, remember the person that you're fighting against is probably going to be doing the exact same thing to you. So you'll both be kind of putting each other on the edge of the radars and you'll both kind of be flying. You know, he'll be flying that way. You'll be flying this way and you'll be just kind of maneuvering, keeping each other in the radar. And it becomes a game of 3D chess and who's the, uh, the smartest at uh, getting the first person to go defensive. So that's a whole nother, you know, whole other bag to open up and dive into for uh, BVR tactics when you're playing against people. But anyways, guys, I hope that helped. If it did, make sure you hit the like button on the video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel. And lastly, but not least, uh, I do stream on Twitch Monday to Friday most days. Sometimes I don't because I've got to work still, but generally Monday to Friday at uh, 1300 Australian Western Standard Time, I stream on Twitch. So if you've got any DCS questions or you just want to come out and come in and hang out and just watch uh, watch us do things, all these all things DCS related, come on by and come and hang out. All right, guys, have a good one. Catch you on the next one.